Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, resume and share the notes. Okay, um, so this is where we concluded in page 40 uh, of the PDF. Um, the last point was that we learned that God is not the author of sickness and disease. Um, this is not his intent or design. It never was. God's will, God's word, and God's deeds, his actions will always be consistent with his nature. Right. So that, that that's where we concluded, okay? Um, and I pray uh, and I would encourage you to just spend time in prayer uh, you know on just dwelling on that truth it's not a fact facts will change but that's the truth right uh, that Lord, let me just be secure in that identity knowing um, that you know you are not the author of sickness and disease and just knowing that uh, Will, will give us a different perspective on how we go about uh, praying for the sick, uh, ministering healing and deliverance to uh, anybody that you might come across, right? And uh, it really has encouraged me and it's given me a different perspective and how um, when I say that I'm, I, I will pray for you, it's just not an, the statement uh, or a, for, a formal statement that makes another person feel good. Uh, whatnot, but I know it's like, hey, that sickness or that ailment or whatever it is, uh, God is not the author of that, right? Um, and so I will minister from that place of knowing that he is good, knowing his nature, uh, his will, his word, everything about him is uh, is good, right? And because he is perfect, uh, he is perfect theology. And so with that in mind, um, again, just building a basis, a foundation for us uh, about ministering, healing and deliverance. Um, the first thing here we see is that uh, his nature, understanding who he is, right? So the reason we can confidently pray and expect healing and deliverance is because of who God is is and we've already seen that in exodus 15 26 that his covenant name is jehovah rapha that he is the lord a healer right um he it's not he was uh he will be no but he is right uh the lord our deliverer a healer Amen. Uh, he is the lord who forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases Okay, um, so our view of sickness, disease, and demonic oppression must come from this understanding that God is our healer and deliverer. Okay, and the second point, uh, the basis of ministering and healing and deliverance is the cross. Okay, um, so the cross is God's remedy for the fall. Okay, uh, can I request uh, uh, someone to read this passage, please? Anyone? Yeah. The cross May. is God's remedy for the fall. Everything that we that was lost in the gardens of Eden through the fall is recovered through the work of Christ, accomplished on the cross on the cross jesus not only bore our sin making it possible for us to be forgiven he also took all our sicknesses and diseases to, prov to provide healings for our body wholeness for our inner mind soul and deliver from demonic power healing wholeness and deliverance deliverance have been provided through the cross yeah. amen Amen. Can we all just say an amen wherever you are with your mics muted? Just say amen, right? Healing, wholeness, and deliverance have been provided through the cross, right? Everything that was lost in the Garden of Eden through the fall, right? Romans 5.12 is recovered through the work Christ accomplished on the cross. Amen. 
Amen. Is so thankful for what Jesus did. Uh, right on the cross, Jesus not only bore our sins, making it possible for us to be forgiven. He also took our sicknesses and disease to provide healing for our bodies. Okay, just think about that point, guys. Okay, the cross or believing in Jesus or the cross is not just our ticket to heaven. Right? Uh, if 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 it was only about salvation. Right? Jesus did not have to be bruised or beaten and stripped. And as we will read in the passages to come, right, uh, we see that in about 760 years before Jesus was born, right, the prophet Isaiah prophesied in detail on what Christ would accomplish on the cross. Right? Uh, Isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5 says, uh, we all know this scripture. It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. And this was prophesied uh, 760 years before before Jesus was born. And uh, just a couple more scriptures. That we, uh, and we see Matthew quoting that same scripture. He says that, uh, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, right? So it is important for us to under know and understand that physical and emotional healing and wholeness was provided for us through the work Jesus did on the cross. Healing is in the atonement. And another powerful scripture, First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-four, says, "Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed." Amen. Um, and I want to read all the scriptures actually for us. Colossians two fourteen fifteen, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Right? He put them to shame. Right? He made a public spectacle. Right? He said, okay, you think you have powers? You don't. Death, where is your sting? Right. Hebrews 2.14 In as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. Okay. Um, so a basis of our understanding, uh, understanding the power of the cross, understanding what Jesus did for us, as on the cross and what was accomplished through the cross uh, is very crucial for us to go about ministering and healing and deliverance. I, I know that we are all Christians, right? We are all born again. We all know, we all partake of the Lord's table, uh, you know, in our churches. Uh, I understand that. But then uh, I think just re-emphasizing this point is that we might not lose that wonder of the cross, right? Uh, many a times I think it can become uh, so over familiar that it loses its significance. It loses its wonder. Oh yeah, the cross. Oh yeah, Jesus died on the cross for me. Oh yeah, he was bruised and whatnot. But then if you can just take a, a minute uh, or more and just ponder and let that actually sink in of what we were and, and what we've been given. And then we read the book of Ephesians. Uh, we see we were lost, right? We were dead in sin. We were dead. Right, but then Jesus comes and redeems us, and that's what happens. Right? Okay. Uh, so let's move on. Um, so uh, we operate out of and based on this on His finished work on the cross to both receive and minister healing and deliverance. Right? I want to read that thing again. That point again. We operate. It means we function. We we work or we do. 
you know, everything based on the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ. Why? Not only to receive healing, but also to minister healing and deliverance. That is one of the key bases. Okay, guys. And as moving on, we come to the second point is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus shed on the cross is our redemption from all the powers of darkness. The blood poured out on the cross announces our deliverance. Okay. Uh, he has delivered us, Colossians 1, 13, 14 says, He has delivered us from the powers of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Hebrews 9, 12, Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with His own blood. He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Once for all, having obtained eternal redemption, right? Jesus uh, was not only our offerer, he was also the offering. He was not only our sacrifice, but Jesus was also our high priest. And it is from that perspective where Hebrews is writing with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, right? Having obtained the eternal redemption. Um, our declaration of the completed work of Christ on the cross and proclamation of what the blood of Jesus had done for us is a powerful weapon against the enemy. Okay. Our declaration. Let's just stop there. Our declaration, what we say, what we confess of the completed work of Christ on the cross and proclaiming it, right? Telling it out loud emphatically of what the blood of Jesus has done. Just declaring it, right? just confessing and saying it is a powerful weapon against the enemy, right? And that's why I'm, I'm sure you would have heard so many people who've gone before us, uh, 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 elderly people, people, our parents, uh, you know, uh, pastors, or whoever you've seen, uh, we, we keep hearing them say, in the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus, right? I plea the blood. Some of the more older folks, uh, you know, more traditional folks will say, I plea the blood of Jesus, right? Uh, that's just declaring it. We don't just say it because of tradition uh, or whatnot. But, and when we just understand who the, the nature of God, when we understand what he has done, what we had lost, and then we declare saying, in the blood of Jesus Christ, there is victory. That is a powerful weapon for us. And we see that in Revelation 12, 11, right? They overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. By the word of their testimony means what? They were declaring what, what, what the blood of Jesus is all about, right? They were declaring, they were confessing, right? And they, and they did not love their lives to death, right? And, uh, and as a last point uh, of this section, we're talking about the blood covenant. Remember, under the basis of heal, ministering healing and deliverance in this section, we are talking about the cross, the power of the cross, the power of his blood. And then we see the blood covenant that God made. Okay, um, so I'm going to request uh, someone to read this passage, please. The blood covenant. God makes all of himself available to people who are in covenant with him. A covenant is a solemn promise, a binding oath or agreement that two parties enter into. Typically, today's covenants are established by signing of a contract or a legal document. God establishes covenant by blood. Blood represents life. God's covenant is life for life. In his covenant, God makes all of himself available to us. In return, he asks for all of ourselves. We all of our being to him because we are in covenant with him. All who God is and all whom he revealed himself 
to be through his covenant names or made available to us who are in covenant with him. Healing and health are parts of God's covenant because he is Jehovah Rapha. Those who are in covenant with him have access to healing, health, and wholeness that comes from him. Thank you, Jeffina. Well, okay, um, just a few points there, a few lines that stands out there. Okay. God makes all of himself okay, available to the people who are in covenant with him. <sighs> okay, this is pause there, okay. This is God. Okay, we he's an infinite being. From everlasting to everlasting, he is God. He is eternity, right? Nobody knows uh, his beginning, his ending. He is the Alpha, he is the Omega. And our brains kind of understand a little bit, uh, you know, the words that we use to describe him. But in all honesty, we can't define or describe him and put him in a box and say, this is who God is, right? And that line says, God makes all of himself available. Can you wrap your head around that? <laughs> like all of himself. I mean, this has to be the best deal of our lives, guys. Right? Not the deals we get on Amazon Prime, on Independence Day. This is like the jackpot or nothing compares to this deal. Okay? God makes all of himself available to people who are in covenant with them. And I'll tell you why this is the best deal of our lives and where we had to do anything, okay, in just a second. So, and then it says here, this, at this point, God's covenant is life for life. In his covenant, God makes all of himself available to us. In return, he asks for all of ourselves, right? Um, and all who God is, and all whom he revealed himself through his covenant names are made available to us who are in covenant with him. Okay, so just remember that. Uh, it's just an amazing deal. But then we look at the next passage. It talks about the Abrahamic covenant and the daughter of Abraham. This is the covenant that talks about God made uh, with Abraham. And, we, and you can read all about it in Genesis chapter 15, verse 9 to 21, okay? But just to give us the gist of how exactly people went about making covenant in those days, um, you might have heard about it or read about it before, is that, you know, two parties, two individuals uh, would come. They would agree upon something. And then, you know, uh, vegans, vegetarians apologize, okay? They would bring a calf or, or, or a, you know, or animal, they would cut it in pieces, right? Like how many other pieces they wanted. And they would walk between the pieces of the animal. Simply stating that if I don't keep my word, what happened to this animal may it happen to me. Okay? And when God made the covenant with Abraham and God tells him to bring, you know, and so and so, etc. etc. And when and when Abraham obeys, only God walks in between and he consumes. Abraham didn't even walk between the animal pieces. And he's saying, you know, <laughs> that that's just God has to say something about our God, you know. Um, and that's the nature, uh, the origins of, of a covenant, right? So in that covenant, God did not explicitly state that healing and deliverance would be provided for. But the fact that it is that implicit in every covenant God makes, he is making all who he is available to those in covenant with him. That means if his covenant name is Jehovah Rapha, that means in every covenant that he made with his people, all of himself, they get the complete package. You know, he's the deliverer, their healer, etc., etc., etc. Right? Um, but and then this uh, in in this passage that's mentioned, okay, Luke chapter thirteen, verse ten to seventeen. 
Okay, uh, just to paraphrase this whole thing, because I there's something that I want us to do. Okay, we we know about the situation where uh, where Jesus is preaching in the synagogue, and uh, this woman has a back bent, and she's been in that condition for 18 years, and this was caused by a demonic spirit of infirmity. Right, she was oppressed for 18 years. Right, and we know the story. Jesus heals her on the Sabbath, and the Pharisees are not really happy about it. They were never really were. <laughs> like I, I can't think of a single verse that they were happy. Uh, you know, with some with Jesus when he did something, but uh, how can you heal on the Sabbath, et cetera, et cetera, and whatnot, right? Verse 15, it says, the, the Lord then answered him and said, hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, check this out, being a daughter of Abraham, Okay, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath. And then when he said this, these things, all his adversaries were put to shame and all the multitude rejoiced in the glorious things were, that were done by him. Okay, but uh, the emphasis here is being the daughter of Abraham. Right? So when we come under a covenant, he's reminding those people of the covenant God made with Abraham and everything about it. And like we just read that although in that covenant, God did not explicitly state that healing and deliverance would be provided for, but he makes, him, he makes all of himself available in the covenant that he makes. Right? And part of that is when we are in the covenant, we become the sons and daughters of this most high. And that means we have unlimited access to everything who he is, right? And that's what this uh, passage is talking about. And uh, healing, deliverance, wholeness, and health are part of our covenant with God because all who God is has been made available to us through the covenant. Amen? Um, so what I want to do right now, I want to pause here for a minute or for some time. Um, we've covered a lot of content, guys, okay? We've understood, we've learned about the power of his cross, his blood, the nature of who this God is, right? Now, I want us to pray, okay? If you have a piece of paper, a book, uh, or whatever it is, if you can write it, if you know of someone or how many other people that you know of, I want you to write them, write it down and what their con condition, health condition is, okay? If they are battling uh, whatever it is, right? Just write it down. Just go ahead and write it down, okay? Even if it's a stomach ache or a leg ache, what you might consider small, um, just write it. Okay, I'll give us a couple of moments, couple of minutes. Okay, I hope you all are um, writing. Okay, the names of the person that you want to pray for and their condition, write it. Um, we are going to believe for healing and miracles. Can we do that? Yes, no, maybe.
Okay, just 30 more seconds. Okay, so I, I would like three of us, any, any three individuals, uh, to release a prayer, to declare a prayer, uh, you know, from, from everything that we've learned so far about God, who he is, how he is the source and the author of life, and he is good, uh, his nature is good, right? Um, and how he, uh, his covenant name is Jehovah Rapha. Uh, and in all the bases, all the foundations that we've learned so far, right? Um, but using those, let's. I want three of us to declare healing uh, over all the spoke, over every need, every prayer request that's written. Okay, we don't need to know everything in detail, right? But then just release a prayer over everything that is being really uh, being written right now. So uh, any three people, let's go ahead and uh, pray. I, I don't want us to wait. Uh, don't wait. I know starting problem can be there, but uh, you know, if you're led, just unmute and go ahead and release the prayer. I want three of us. Okay, let's, let's go. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class that we had, Jesus, where we learned that we are in covenant with Jehovah Rapha. God, you have healed us on the cross 2,000 years ago. Right now, I pray for everyone who is suffering from sickness, everyone that is written on the list, everyone we are placing our hands over this, Jesus. God, you are a healer. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, I by know your that you are healed. Heart and nine you are healed. Father Almighty, King of Glory, to be glad. Sorry, Jafina, go ahead. God, I know that you are here. God, I know that you are hearing our prayer. Jesus, we come to you. Jesus, we believe on the cross. Jesus, we believe on the blood that you have poured upon us. Jesus, we believe on your name that is above all names. We believe on Jehovah Rapha, who is our healer. God, we believe on our healer right now as we pray. Everyone that is written on the list, everyone whose name and who the people mentioned, let them be healed in the name of Jesus right now. You are a healer. And when we ask any thing in the name of Jesus, we receive it. We receive it. We ask and we receive it. And we thank you for helping us to receive us. this one, Jesus. Everyone is healed. Everyone we are praying for right now is healed by the blood of Jesus. There is nothing that can bring us healing other than your name, Jesus. There is nothing that can bring us healing other than your blood, Jesus. You never wanted us to suffer. You never wanted us to be destroyed, but you came to give us a life. You came to give us life Jesus, you came to give us life. I pray that everyone who is suffering from all the sickness is receiving life in the name of Jesus right now. We thank you for healing. We thank you for healing. We thank you. We receive it and we believe on that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Someone else? Uh, can I pray? Yes, tell it. Go ahead. Father, we come in agreement and we lift up all those who are sick. Uh, I remember our brother Sid in the mighty name of Jesus. Every pain in his body, I command you to leave his body right now in Jesus' name. Headache, body pain, I command you to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Every fever, I command you to leave right now in Jesus' mighty name. I declare the wholeness of God, the life of God to flow into his body right now because by the stripes of Jesus, I declare that seed is already healed because Jesus, you already paid the penalty for his sickness at the weeping post. And by your stripes, I declare uh, my brother is healed in the mighty name of Jesus. I also remember Stila in the mighty name of Jesus. Asthma, I bind you in Jesus' mighty name. Every spirit of infirmities, I command you to leave he, leave the body right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, O Rabba Shaka Rabba Zande, I release life. In the name of Jesus, I command her lung to function correct, correctly, line up with the word of God. Be healed, be whole, 
right now in Jesus' mighty name. I also lift up Suzanne in the name of Jesus, who is suffering from unknown diseases. All, all these different kind of diseases has a name, but the name of Jesus is above every name, and this sickness, diseases will bow down to the name of Jesus. I declare life, I declare healing in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, we remember all those who are sick, Lord. I pray your healing anointing, you will touch them, heal them, deliver them. I thank you, Lord, for the finished work. I thank you, Lord, we believe it is done, Lord. I thank you that we have a better covenant with you because Jesus, in you, we have a better covenant lord god we thank you lord for all uh, all these things is being answered lord we thank you lord we bless you lord in jesus name we receive the healing amen 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 amen, amen. uh one last person anybody who wants to just leave in prayer Can I pray? Sure, Isaac, go ahead. Our God, our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for your love that you gave for us. You sent your son, Jesus, to save and to heal us. And everywhere he went, we believe he was healing people. He is the same today as it was yesterday. Father, Lord, we believe that he died on the cross. And on the finished work of the cross, he had become our source of healing. We take authority over every sickness that is disturbing all of us, including me who I'm praying also. At every uh, sickness or every kind of sickness that is disturbing us, that will be wiped away through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, we want to thank you for your power. We believe that the ailment is not from you, that every ailment is coming from either the devil or by his work, but we believe that your mighty hand is over everything. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the finished work he did for the cross. We accept the covenant that you, 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 we entered into. We are, accept us as your children of covenant and heal us from all facets of illness and diseases. This we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Uh, I particularly want to pray uh, for this. As uh, for, if any one of you have been praying for your parent uh, for their health condition to get well, uh, if you don't mind, uh, you can mention it in the chat section if you want to uh, their their name and. And if you want to, their health condition. I just feel led to pray for our parents whom you've been praying for uh, and uh, waiting on the Lord for a breakthrough for their healing. Um, and I want all of us to pray for them. So um, if there's anybody here who's been praying for your parents' uh, health condition to get better? All right. Okay. All right, let's pray. Father, we, we come before your presence, Lord. We come to the throne of grace, Jesus, boldly, through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us on Calvary, God. Lord, we look to you. You are our healer. You are our Jehovah Rapha, God. You are the source of life. Jesus, you've made all of you available for us, God. And so we, we say thank you. And right now we bring uh, Jesus Nikki's uh, mother-in-laws before you. Father, we, we pray for her knee. Jesus, we pray in the name of Jesus. We all come in agreement and we release strength to her knee right now, God. 
in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, reveal the wonder-working power of Jesus right now, God. And we believe for a miracle because you are the God of miracles, Father. Every pain be gone, every discomfort be gone around the knee. Every muscle, every tissue that's tight be loosened in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, your word says Lord, you give strength to our feet and you quicken our feet like the feet of a deer, God. I pray that you will strengthen, strengthen her knees right now. Strengthen her leg, her feet, Father. Restore the joy of her walking without pain, Father. Restore the joy of her running, Father. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray that your river of healing will flow right now, touching every knee, every feet, every leg. Lord, I pray for the varicose veins right now to be healed in their legs, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that condition. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Be made whole. Be made whole. We speak to their bodies, God. Lord, you've given us dominion over the dust of this earth. So we speak to our bodies right now in the name of Jesus. We declare, we confess, we release healing over them. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we uh, just pray for, for anyone uh, Lord, with diabetic condition. Father, Lord, I pray that diabetes will be healed right now. I believe diabetes is being healed right now, God. Different stages of diabetes being healed right now, God. What is impossible with man is possible with you, God. Nothing is impossible with you, Father. You are our healer. You are the source of life. I pray that your blood will flow in every single vein in their body. Your blood that carries life and strength, I pray, will flow in every single cell, every single vein. Father, Lord, renew every single cell in their body, God. Let it be made new in the name of Jesus. You are the same God who healed 2,000 years ago and you are still healing today, God. You have not changed. You want to see your children enjoy life, God. That is who you are. You are a good father. We thank you for what you're doing right now, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Can, uh, can someone quickly uh, pray for Zelatoli's brother, please? Anyone, very quickly. Let's go. Father, we want to pray for Zelatoli's brother right now in the name of Jjesus. We come against every issues of his mind, emotions. And we come against it now in the name of Jesus and by the authority that you have given us. Father, we declare healing over his bipolar disorder right now in the name of Jesus. We speak healing by the authority that you have given us. Lord, you have finished the work for healing at the cross. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare complete healing over his mind in the name of Jesus. We declare total healing over his mind in the name of Jesus. And we command, uh, we, we rebuke every powers of darkness. We rebuke every spirit of infirmity. We take authority over it now and uproot it in the name of Jesus. We declare strength over his mind, over his emotions. And we pray, O oh God, that he would be able to experience your grace. And the entire family, O oh God, will rejoice together because of what you have done for them, Lord Jesus. 
and we declare it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, praying for everybody. Uh, we will continue to pray. Uh, but yeah, um, just want to encourage us to just move in the authority that we uh, that has been made available for us. Right. Be bold in ministering. Uh, you know, in healing and in deliverance to one another. Amen. Um, like when you say that you, uh, I will pray for you, uh, just let it come out of uh, uh, the place of authority, knowing that you are the son and daughter of the Most High God. Amen. Um, so just as I want to conclude with one last point uh, in our notes is, uh, is it? <clears throat> sorry, just, Okay, I hope I'm in the... There you are. Okay. Okay, uh, page 46, just, just the last point I want to share with us before we leave. Uh, Right. Healing is the children's bread, okay? Uh, we're on page 46 in the PDF. Um, healing is the children's bread. Remember how, uh, you know, within the covenant, everyone who is under the covenant is considered as the child of God, right? And so with this premise, uh, healing is the children's bread, okay? When you see in Acts chapter 3, verse 25, you are the sons of the prophets and the covenant which God made with our fathers saying to Abraham and in your seed all families of the earth shall be blessed okay now there is this one portion of scriptures uh, we know of the Syrophoenician women in Matthew chapter 15 verse 21 to 28 um, and also as the same passage you can read about it in Mark chapter 7 verse 24 to 30 right um, but just to paraphrase this whole scripture here, we, we know that uh, Jesus goes from, uh, from, from Capernaum, he's going up to Tyre and Sidon, okay? This is going way up geographically speaking, going up north. Um, now after Galilee, the, this is the region of the Gentiles, right? Tyre uh, and Sidon. Um, that's where um, the Jews just didn't want to go. And if you continue to read Matthew 15, and if you go on to chapter 16, uh, it, you know, it's, a very, it's a famous passage where um, you know, Jesus asks uh, you know, about uh, who do you think I am or who do you say I am, right? Because he's traveling up north and that is a, in the Caesarea Philippi that's again going up, way up north. So all of this region was filled with the Gentiles um, and they did not get along with the Jews and the Jews just could not stand the Gentiles, right? They just could not stand the Gentiles. Uh, so that's the, uh, you know, uh, the context and we all know what happens, uh, you know, uh, this woman comes asking for Jesus to heal her daughter uh, who's uh, been oppressed by the evil spirit. Right? And we all know what Jesus responds, but he answered and said, I was not sent to the lost, uh, except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Now, uh, you know all the controversial questions that come to us. How can Jesus, you know? Uh, verse 27, and she said, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Okay. Uh, now, just quickly, here it says, the house of Israel, the people in covenant with God are referred to as the children. Okay. Uh, in this passage, the Lord Jesus refers to healing and deliverance as the children's bread. 
right? So this woman is coming here asking for her daughter to be healed. And Jesus says, it's not good to take the children's bread, right? Um, healing and deliverance are God's provision for all who are in covenant with him. Uh, this is something all can partake of. It is ours for the asking any time. What is interesting is that the Canaanite woman, though an outsider to the covenant, also received the blessing and healing and deliverance by asking for just one crumb. Right? The key is she asked in faith. How much more can we, more who are in covenant with God, enjoy God's abundant provision of healing and deliverance? Right. So I'm just going to stop there. And, uh, and when you can, uh, just uh, read the passage, uh, that whole page. Um, healing and deliverance is our bread. It's made, it's not just one slice that's been available. I'm sure there's just an entire loaf or loaves of bread is set for us on the table. It's ours for the taking. We are the children of the Most High God. Right. My son doesn't have to ask my permission to take something that he would want to eat. If he wants it, he would, unless it's junk, of course. But, but he would exercise that identity of sonship. Right. And that's made available for all of us, you and me. Right. This bread of healing and deliverance is made available for you and I. OK, so that's the conclusion I want us to uh, leave, uh, leave us with for today. Uh, you know, just go back and uh, meditate and dwell on what we've learned today. Um, and uh, God bless you. Okay, I'll see you all again next week. And uh, Ribi, uh, we will pray for your husband. We will keep your husband in prayer. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining in. I will stop the recording now. Guys, take care. Have a lovely day. Bye.